How about some lemonade? That uh, sounds good. Ah, I did the spot. There's something different about you today. Different? Yeah. Well, it's your hair. You're, you're wearing your hair different. Yes. Oh, it looks great. Thanks. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you a question. Hmm? It's not a question, really. It's, uh... Hey, take a look. I don't believe it. Stell's out of her room. Where'd you get that dog? Oh, I, I found him. I asked her if she'd take care of him during the day. You know, walk him and stuff. Mr. Haskins isn't gonna like it. What does Mr. Haskins like? Good day, Mrs. Weeks, Estelle. Yeah, that pup's not giving you any trouble, is he, Estelle? Heavens, no. I'll never have to bathe again. He washes my face every minute. Have you named him yet? Yes. Poofy. Poofy? Yes. The first dog I ever had when I was a little girl was named Poofy. I'll change it if you don't like it. He is your dog. Oh, no. Oh, I think Poofy's fine. What do you think, Leslie? I think it suits him. All right, Poofy it is, then. Oh, good. <laughs> One more thing. If there's ever a time when you have to be busy or away, I want you to know that Poofy can sleep here with me. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Hey, as a matter of fact, I'm just getting settled at my place. I've got a lot of work to do there. It'd be a lot easier for me if you could stay here with you for a while. Oh, fine. Fine. Well, better take him for his walk. Growing boy needs his exercise. <laughs> Come on, Poofy. Uh, I'm happy to see her out. And uh, what was that question you were going to ask me? Oh, uh, I forgot. It uh, slipped my mind. Well, I better get this grass cut then before Haskins gets on my case. Thanks for the lemonade. Would you like to have dinner at my place? Sure, what time? Seven. Is that too early or too late? Ah, oh, seven's fine. Okay. See you then. Mr. Gold, I'm trying to walk my dog. Am I stopping you? That's a nice doggy. Listen, now that you're out of your room, I thought we might have dinner together in the dining room. No, thank you. Why not? I'm not such a bad person. We could talk a little. I can't. I, I can't leave Poofy alone. Poofy? My dog. He's only a puppy. I can't leave him. Listen to this. Suppose I bring the trays down to your room and we have dinner there. More private. Mr. Gold, you ought to be ashamed. Of what? Flirting at your age. Listen to this. Do you know how old George Burns is? You're not George Burns. This I know. If I was George Burns, you'd have to be 20 years old for me to ask you to dinner. Good day, Mr. Gold. Let me tell you one more thing, Mrs. Wicks Estelle. You know the difference between you and me? I still have feelings. Mr. Gold. I don't like to eat later than five o'clock. Mrs. Weeks Estelle, I'll be there five o'clock sharp with bells on. <laughs> Mr. 
Where'd you get all that stuff? What stuff? All the makeup. Is there something wrong with it? No, just not like you is all. I know. It's almost seven. I'm going, don't worry. Just hope you don't wind up getting hurt. Good night, Mark. See you later. I look pretty. Are you sure you wouldn't like a beer? No, no, I'm fine, really. You play the piano? Oh, well, once in a great while. Do, do you like onion dip? Mm hmm Well, dinner won't be ready for about 30 minutes, so I'll make some to keep our stomachs from growling. All right. Hey, what are you cooking anyway? It smells good. Chicken and peppers. Mm -hmm. I hope it's good. Yeah, good company makes for good food. <sighs> My brother doesn't care much about food except for steak, so I really don't get a chance to try different things. No, I knew I'd forget something. What do you need? I didn't get any sour cream. Well, I think I've got some at my place. I had it on my list. Don't worry about it. Just take me a minute. I'll be right back. Can I help you, Mark? Yeah, you can help me. You can help me by telling me what you're after. I don't know what you mean. Oh, come on. Don't play Mickey the Dunce with me. I've been there. I know the difference between a straight John and a con man. Now, you want to talk to me, you want to talk to the cops. Go on. I have been to every nursery, every bicycle shop in this town. None of them ever heard of you. Now, can you explain that to me? I'd rather not. And what about this place? I mean, you've got no clothes, you don't have any food, you don't even have a toothbrush or a razor. You don't live here, this place is a front. I want some answers, Mr. Smith. Look, all I can tell you is I'm just doing my job. I'm not here to hurt anybody. Please believe me. 
Sound like all the rest of them. I'm innocent. Please believe me. Now, I'm going to tell you one more time. Either you talk to me or I call the cop. If you do that, I'll have to leave before my job's done. Then talk. If I tell you, you're not going to believe me anyway. <sighs> Try me. All right, then. In my job, I'm sent to various places by my boss to try to help people. Go on. I'd like to leave it at that. Yeah, I bet you would. Come on, come on now. What is the setup here? I mean, who's your boss? God. What? My boss is God. Oh, boy, oh, boy, my sister really picked a winner. I mean, you're nothing but a kook. Well, I told you, you wouldn't believe me. And you were right. Listen, I don't know whether you're a harmless kook or a dangerous kook, but I'll tell you one thing. I am not leaving you alone with my sister, not until the police have a chance to check you out. I'll let you leave in a minute. What do you mean, you let me leave? Just what I said. You wanted the truth, I'm giving it to you. I'm an angel. I'm not one of the best, but I try. And I make mistakes. Bicycles were a mistake. But he let me have them. He? Yeah, God. Guess he figures the only way I'm going to learn is by mistakes. I'm kind of new at this. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Listen, friend, you need help. Yes, I do. I need your help. What good is it going to do you to go to the police? I'll be gone by the time you get back, and I won't have finished my job. Then I hurt a whole bunch of innocent people for no reason. And all because you don't trust your fellow man. An awful lot of good people in this world, Mark. I'm just here to try to help them. I said my piece, you can go now. If you change your mind about talking to the police, you're welcome to have dinner here. Leslie said you like steak. You'll find one in the refrigerator. Better bring the sour cream. I'm sorry it took so long. No, no, I hadn't heard about it. I don't know. Of course. Don't cry, Estelle. Look, uh, I'll be right there. Yes, I will. I'm sure he will. All right. Goodbye. What's wrong? That was Estelle. Mr. Haskins notified everyone tonight. The home will be sold by Friday. They have to find other accommodations. They're all so upset, I, I said that I'd come down and see them. I'll go with you. Thanks. I'll turn off the stove. All right, where are you going? Mark, what are you doing in the bushes? Never mind what I'm doing in the bushes. Where are you going? It's been a problem with the home. Oh. Come on, I'll drive you. I haven't made that call yet. I know. How can they do this? Just like that. Out. All of you out. Gee, just when things were starting to get good, we were starting to feel like a family. They don't care. 
because we're old people. If they treated animals that way, they'd be in trouble. Why do people care more about animals than they do people? Because they don't like themselves. Where will they send us? Wherever there's room. They don't care. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Still might be something we can do. Let me, let me talk to Mr. Haskins tomorrow. What can you do? It's money here. A profit. That's all we're talking about. They can make more by selling. They sell. He's right. We'll never see each other again. Oh, what do you care? You don't have to worry. Your family wants you. You'll have a good home. They don't want me. All I have is you. You people here. My daughter isn't in Europe. I wanted you to believe it, and I wanted to believe it. She said I'd be better off, happier. She said it was for my own good. But I was a nuisance and a bother to her. She had no right to send me here. She has room, lots of it. And she doesn't have to work. She doesn't have to do anything. And I hate her for throwing me away. Oh, why can't she remember when I held her to my breast? Look, selling this place wasn't my idea. I just work here. This is no picnic for me. I'm out of a job. And what about those old people out there? What about them? They're not my problem. They're not yours either. If I were you, I'd worry about finding myself another job. You're out of work too, you know. I want to speak to the owner. Oh, man Sinclair? He's not going to see you. I've only seen him once in all the years I've been here. Where can I find him? You're wasting your time. I got plenty of time. Search yourself. As I said, you're wasting your time. Thank you. Excuse me. What are you doing in here? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Now, don't Sinclair. be sorry. Just get out. How'd you get in here? I got a buzzer lock on that door. Well, it must be out of order. Well, I'll have that fixed now. Just go on and get out. It's very important that I talk to you. All right. I ask you nicely. I'll have you thrown out. It's a matter of life and death, Cubby. Cubby? Where'd you get that from? A friend of mine. I haven't heard that name since I left high school. Allison Drake used to call me that. I know. My friend told me. <laughs> Boy, it's a small world, isn't it? Very small. We were going to get married. But our parents were against it. It was hers, really. I, I didn't have a dime. That's when I went out in the world to make my fortune. I see you did. Do you know where she is now? 
she passed away a few years ago. It's just a uh, matter of life and death. You're selling Havencrest. Yeah, that's right. I've got the papers right here on my desk. If that home is sold, those old people will be split up, sent who knows where. For some of them, that's the only family they've got. They need each other, Mr. Sinclair. And I'm sorry about it, but it's business. Aren't there some things that are more important than business? For me? No. Well, there used to be a long time ago when my nickname was Cubby. But not anymore, Mr. Uh... Smith. Well, Mr. Smith, you may think I'm very cold about this, but it's a cold world. People make it that way. That may be true. But I didn't get to the top floor of this building by being sentimental. Now, I worked for it seven days a week. That is how you become a success in this world. Glad to know that. The offer I received was for, let me see, it was $116,000. I'll sell it to you or anybody else for the same price. Those old people don't have that kind of money and you know it. And I'm sorry. How much time do I have? come up with the money. I was going to close the deal today. I'll give you to six tomorrow. Thank you for your time. Mr. Smith. Do you know? Did Allison get married? Now she waited for you. I guess you were busy. open. How'd it go with Sinclair today? You didn't see him? Oh, yeah. And? And he spent most of the time telling me how he became a success. It always amazes me how people who are so lonely, so devoid of love in their lives, still consider themselves successful. Why don't you do something? Like what? I don't know. If you know, if you're what you say you are, why don't you just make things right? Because it doesn't work that way. I'm just an employee. I do what he lets me do. What does he want you to do? I told you I don't know. I can't believe I'm talking like this. Listen, are you, are you really, you know, what you say you are? Because I'm going to feel awful stupid if this is some kind of trick. It's not a trick. Then why don't he do something? Because maybe he's busy or maybe he's waiting for me to do something. I just don't know. Well, you just can't sit there and let these old people down. Look, I'm doing the best I can. At least I got Sinclair to wait until 6 o'clock tomorrow before he sells. It'll take a miracle. Very well put. Somewhere, somehow, we're going to have to come up with $116,000. Got any suggestions? Yeah. How about we rob a bank? Oh, that's very good. What about a long shot? Like what? Like I said, a long shot, a horse. Oh, no, you wouldn't like that. Besides, it wouldn't be fair. I can tell who's going to win. You're going to what? I can tell who's going to win. Well, then you got to do it. It's a 100% sure thing. It's not a 100% sure thing if he doesn't like it, and he's not going to like it because it's gambling. Come on, what's worse? A little gambling or seeing those old people thrown out on the street? Listen, they even play bingo in church if it's for a good cause. Now, all you got to do is go out to that track. He'll either let you win or he won't. At least it's a chance. 
We'd still have to come up with the money to bet. They got their monthly checks, and Leslie and I come up with a few hundred. And if they lose? Jonathan, they are going to lose for sure if you don't try. I have a feeling I'm going to regret this. So the decision is yours. If we get lucky, you're going to own this place. If we're not, you're going to be right back where you started. Minus a few dollars. That's right, Sid. And you say you're pretty good at this picking the ponies? Oh, he's real good at it. Well, I for one say nothing ventured, nothing gained. How about the rest? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's cash our checks and get to the track. Scratch. In the fifth race, scratch number five, Billy Joyce. Number five, Billy Joyce has been scratched from the fifth race. Anything you like? Shh. You see anything you like? Did you wait a minute? Number three looks like a runaway. Look at those odds, six to five. Maybe you ought to wait and pick something in the next race. Would you be quiet for a minute? I'm just trying to pick a horse. Sorry. Less than 10 minutes till first post. First post in 10 minutes. The odds are number five. The odds are right, 30 to 1. <laughs> He's the one. You sure? You want to pick the horse? Just ask him. He's the one. on the nose. On the nose? To win. Of course to win. You think I'd bet him to lose? Sidney, maybe I better go with you. My friend, don't worry about a thing. I used to be an accountant. Next. Number 
three, hundred to win, a third place. There you go. Next. Come on, come on, you got a line behind you. Now five minutes, five minutes to post time. Old timer. Are you all right? I'm fine. Just praying. The horses have reached the starting gate. They're at the post for the first race, first half of the Daily Double. Waiting on number four, top award. Top award delaying the start. Here it comes. Here it comes. As they say, the fat's in the fire. <laughs> the flag is up. They're all in line and ready for the start. And they're on. Risky red on the outside, charging up to take the lead. Toward the inside, that's Patches and the three horses, Ray Rocket with Tom Ward, followed by Windsock and Cannonball as they move to the clubhouse turn. Tightly bunched on the front end. Cannonball charging up on the outside. Risky red at the rail. Come on, fine. Between horses, and Come on, fine. Hey, what's our horse's name, anyway? Devil's Lad. As the field moves on, down the right stretch, the front runner, Risky Come Red, on, drops out of it. And here comes Windsock to take the lead. Cindy Kim from the back of the pack is right there. And charging up, it's Devil's Lad. Third on the outside. Top award, followed by Cannonball. The field moves to the far turn that way. On the inside, Windstock has the lead. On the outside, Cindy Kim and Devil's Lad is flying around the far turn. On the inside, it's Windstock leading it by three parts of length. On the outside, Cindy Kim is second. Devil's Lad is third, but painting with every stride as the field moves to the top of the stretch. Cindy Kim now taking the lead by a hit, but here comes Devil's Land on the outside to challenge, and down the stretch they come. Cindy Kim and Devil's Land head and head side to side. Wrestling on to the finish. Cindy Kim on the inside with a short lead. Devil's Land driving up on the outside. A two-horse race to the runner. Cindy Kim on the inside now, pulling away. It's going to be Cindy Kim winning it impressively. Devil's Land was second. The unofficial order of finish here in the first race. Number seven, Cindy Kim was first under the wire. Number five, Devil's Lad was second. And there's a photograph for show position. I know you feel bad, but you try. We thank you for it. Attention, please. Oh, wait a minute. Inquiry. It ain't over yet. Well, what's his inquiry? It's a foul. If it's on number seven, he gets set back. Number five will win. Boys, man. Ladies and gentlemen, a steward's inquiry here in the first race. Please hold all tickets. Attention, please. The inquiry sign appears on the totalizator board. Please hold all tickets. The stewards found no reason for a disqualification. The result stands well, official. We might as well go home. Officially in the first race, the winner number seven, Cindy Kim. Number five, Devil's Lad was second. And number one, Patches finished third. In the next race, there are no changes. No changes in the second race, second half of the Daily Double. Post time in 25 minutes. I still can't believe it. And those, that's how close. 4,400 out the window on number seven. Number five. Number, wait a minute. This doesn't say, look at it. It's number seven. I asked him for a five and he gave me a seven. It is a seven. We won. What? We won! We won! It's 
talking about? Look at this ticket. Sydney got number seven by mistake. Seven? And for seven paid sixty-two dollars. That's more than enough money. Let's get this ticket cash. We got some business to take care of. Thanks. Yes, officer, yes. No, I've no idea where they are. That's why I reported it. No. No, they've never done anything like this before. They're not allowed. Wait a minute, they, they may be back. Yes, I will. <laughs> Miss Gordon, would you mind telling me where you've been? I've been worried sick. You know our rules. Mr. Haskins, from now on, we have new rules. Our rules will meet and decide what they are. I wasn't speaking to you, Mr. Gold. I know this, but as one of the new owners of this establishment, I'm speaking to you. What? It's a long story, Mr. Haskins, but it's true. They bought the building. And we'll be very happy to keep you on as long as you cooperate. And that means we can have pets. And go on outings. And barbecues. Don't forget the barbecues. You think about it. Right now, we have to get ready for a party. Yes! <laughs> Mrs. Weeks, Estelle, you look very beautiful tonight. Thank you. And you look very handsome. Oh, handsome, I don't know. But loving you, I do. Look at you blush, like a young girl. May I ask you a question? Go ahead. Would you give me a kiss? I haven't kissed a man since my husband died. It would be an honor to have the first and the last. missing one heck of a party in there. <laughs> Leslie sent me to look for you. I think... Hey, something home? I have to go. When? Tonight. My work's done here. Can't you just stay on a while? I wish I could, but it's not up to me. Where are you going to go? Not sure yet. He'll let me know. It's the only hard part of this job. You meet people you care about, and then you have to move on. It's lonely sometimes. Let me tell Leslie. Be a lot of questions if it's better this way. She's gonna take it awful hard. Oh, no, she's gonna be fine, believe me. As long as you give her a chance. Me? Yeah, you. If she spent these past years worrying about you instead of living her own life. You can't let her do that anymore. <laughs> well, she's got. Oh, no, Lord. She's all you've got.
You know I'm right, don't you? Well, it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. I couldn't have done that before I met you. Jonathan, Mark... Oh, excuse me. Is is Jonathan in? I don't know any Jonathan. Uh, I just moved in here tonight. He's gone already? I'm afraid so. Uh, the apartment just came up for rent and I grabbed it. Oh, I see. Well, um, I'm sorry to disturb you. Oh, you didn't, Miss... Um... Gordon. Leslie Gordon. Gary Johnson. Again, uh, I'm sorry. You live around here? Uh, yeah, right here, next door. Well, I guess that means uh, I'll be seeing you around, huh? Sure. I'll be seeing you. What are you doing out here? Well, you told me to give Leslie a chance. That's what I'm doing. I told her I'd keep in touch. Uh, you didn't waste any time. Couldn't if I'm going to go with you. You know, wait, wait a minute. I can't do that. Come on. You said yourself last night. It's a lonely job. Look, I know what I said, but I... I already know everything about you. It's not... I want to help you help people. You can do that without me, Mark. Please. Give me a chance. If it doesn't work out, you can always send me back. It's not my decision to make. I'm sorry.
You're telling me no, then. 